Hi, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Wolf. This is my third video. This is a solo mission. I'm missing my other parts of the zoo school today. They may show up, they may not, as they're out in the playground playing. Experimentally, we out on our little adventures to learn about themselves. Again, my name is Dr. Wolf, and I appreciate you for coming to this learning session as we try to gain a deeper understanding of a deeper learning for the for our students. So, hashtag zoo school, Dr. Wolf. This is the part three. <clears throat> so, today we talk about the importance of literacy in our schools. And myself, being Dr. Wolf, I used to be a former physical education teacher, and big focus of that one is is that. In my teaching experience, when I was a student, when I was a little baby woofy, and I was in my big, you know, the, the high school, the junior high school, a lot of times, our type of literacy we type of did for physical education was writing notes. So we would sit there on our desks and we would write notes. So you would do volleyball or basketball, stuff like that. But uh, that was only very rare. But a lot of times in our other classes was it just seemed like it was an overhead, write some notes down. Here's another overhead, write some notes down. And that was a big part of, you know, some may say it was good, some may say it was bad. But a big part of that was like you would be writing, so you were forced to try to, to write and spell things correctly and neat and fast and stuff like that. But now it seems like everything's on a PowerPoint for everybody, um, which makes learning a bit faster. Everything's a lot faster with technology. Um, so that's a big part of literacy today. Um, so there was notes and then another part of literacy was a type of reading. So just like similar to like an exercise we did in class the other day where you, you were reading different difficult words put together, there were different spellings and being aware of those, those, those words. Um, so some teachers use popcorn reading. So when we were reading, it would just kind of like be randomized sort of thing. And that's a big part of the literacy of when I was growing up in in my in my teaching in my my previous teaching experiences we uh in in physical education we try to do things like quick writes or entrance steps so you kind of see the temperature of the room or the knowledge that's in the room before you to begin a subject so if it was educational gymnastics you would try to you know pose a question and then everyone in the class would kind of reflect on that and kind of give a what information. So then you have a gauge of the, the knowledge, especially if you are like a first year teacher or coming into a school where you don't know the students as well, it's a good gauge to see what you have to work with or where you can go, or maybe even more possibilities will be endless of what you can learn and help these and uh, educate these students with, you know, the literacy of physical education, which sometimes maybe people would call it physical literacy. So just getting that background and um and and whenever I performed uh, a dance sequence I gave them a rubric and then from the rubric so for example I'll show you here. There's a rubric and in the rubric it kind of has the expectations of how they should perform and what's required of them and this is outlined to them before they begin and and very similar to the the faction type thing where they have their creativity engagement participation teamwork and performance and a big part about this literacy is is that you know i kind of outline all right here's your delve your telephone dance routine and then they kind of create and critical things to make the easiest way to to learn the sequence now when they finish it they have this beautiful kind of reflections questions now with my with my experience there's been various different types of answers to these questions some are brief short long um and they they develop different types of answers and some of them like that's where you really get to see the different types of literacy in the fact that Ooh, sorry, organize my papers. So that's where you really see the literacy of different spellings. So sometimes they might be talking about, oh, 
you know, at the zoo school, we have lots of bears, but bear is used differently and spelled differently in different instances. And sometimes some people might say, oh, it's fun to be in our bear feet or something like that. And they spell bear the wrong bear. So I gotta fix my glasses here. There we go. So that is an example of some, uh, some literacy things that may be challenged within them. And that's at like the junior high level. So, you know, sometimes your students might be over here in the spectrum and then some might be over here in their knowledge. And that's how they kind of, um, you know, it's the, the variance of the degree. So us as a teacher must try and, you know, go to those little, little type of different, the different animals and teach different strategies to them. And we'll be going over those different strategies to assist all the people in the zoo to help them higher be higher educated. So that is some examples of the past education. Now moving on to some course learnings. Boy, was there a boatload of, 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 of learnings. It's almost like Noah's Ark all over again. And, and there was just two of everything. And, and it was so much cool, unique, <clears throat> unique strategies that, you know, us as teachers will be able to utilize in the classroom. Yeah. There was access slips, like we mentioned before. So like, especially in phys ed, you can have the access slip at the end of class. So like, um, before they leave, you kind of can do, kind of mark your attendance with it and kind of gain their understanding of, of what they learned. So if it was tactical strategies, you know, then they can have that mindset. Or like I like to do a lot of time is I bring the whole wolf pack in or the whole, the zoo, the class, and we just kind of ask questions and they can kind of reflect an answer, but this allows an outlet for the other students to be able to speak their minds. So we got excessive quick writes. So if it was about a certain subject or something like that in physical education, about um, the heart, the body, nutrition, all these different things, you can do a nice little quick write and gain again, gain that they'll help them gain understanding. Um, as well as you could do a social action paper with the physical education curriculum or different health issues or obesity or or food in the cafeteria. Like, hey, like what what the, what food should we you know, be serving the cafeteria. Is there a difference between the diet Pepsi and the non-diet Pepsi or a, a chips that are baked and non-baked? Is there a big enough difference to be able to, to have the certain ones in the vending machine? Those are great ideas for types of papers you could use. Um, again, we're talking about the rubrics and creating the expectations. We have KWL charts, which are knowing and wanting and learning. So, They'll help gain understanding. We had the raft. We had satisfaction, or I like to call it satisfaction, which is faction. So creating the, again, a big part of my whole life is creating that moment for the, 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 uh, the students. So they create that moment and then they can learn from it and have reflection and be able to recall that information by creating that moment. And I really think we'll get into faction a little bit later. Um, so then we have written convo so they can get in their groups and kind of, you know, write a conversation or write it back and forth to each other, um, through, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, write it back and forth. Um, like with letter writing, we can also do drawing and illustrations. So different students have different feelings and they can express themselves in different ways and they could be all part of a process. So, uh, also including kind of like a multi-genre project so they can have different ways of doing it. Um, and the big part, and we'll get into this later, is kind of um, is with all the revising and editing stages and how that cross curriculars over everything and they develop those skills. Um, we also have the brochure. We'll also talk about a brochure a bit later. But here's an also an example of what you could do in phys ed with a brochure. Once I get it up here. Perfect. So this is a brochure that you could do. So this is like teaching kid for understanding. And it's got the little batting fielding thing in here. It's got like a exclamation, some rubrics. It's got games, nice colorful things. And again, it takes you no know, trial and error to learn different things like this. And it's got this nice, nice model as well in there. Um, so they can kind of they can also gain more understanding of what you're trying to do 
as a physical education teacher for what they're trying to learn as well. So that is a big thing. So another one is brainstorming. Brainstorming is huge in physical education because as a teacher, you want to, you ask a bunch of questions, you write things down, and then you kind of get the idea behind the, if you were doing a unit and 